Awesome. So as everybody else rolls in, we've got quite a few people on the line, uh, but I'll get started and uh, kick this off for Oswin. So today we're going to talk about what's new in continuity management with the Washington release. I quickly have to go over the safe harbor statements. We tend to try to be as transparent as possible with what's coming in the product and answering your questions as much as we can. Um, but that being said, please note that things can and do shift during our development cycles and don't hold us to anything that we're saying on this call. But if you do have additional questions after this call, feel, feel free to contact us. We're happy to be as open, as I said, as we can about what's coming up. In that vein, we do have a lot of webinars and exchanges and an interactive series on the ServiceNow community. And today's session is part of that live on ServiceNow curated event series, where we're trying to connect ServiceNow experts and peers with you and helping you deploy your products and achieve value faster. You can join the schedule by scanning the QR code, or I'll put a link in the chat shortly after my comments. Thanks for joining us. And I will introduce Oswin briefly, but everybody on the call probably knows him as the principal product manager for both business continuity management and operational resilience. Um, I am Rosalind Morville and I'm the senior marketing manager. You are on mute, uh, so definitely please use the chat feature or if you have questions, the Q&A. The Q&A is better because we can see who is asking the question and it will be recorded. So if we don't get your question, then we can follow up after the call. The session is being recorded, as I said, and it will be live in the community forum shortly after the event. And after the session ends, you may be prompted for a short survey, and we use this for future uh, content and try and get us uh, ideas and inspiration, as well as give you all the insight that we can. So please use that survey uh, whenever it's prompted so that we can be more helpful to you. I wanted to let you know that our new risk applications and updates are now live in the Service ServiceNow store. Uh, this is the Washington release, and it was released um, earlier uh, last week. We do have a lot of sessions coming up to talk about things that have been released in the Washington release. Earlier this week, we had an on we had a session that will now be placed on demand in a day or so in the community on privacy case management. Privacy management is now a standalone uh, product that you can uh, purchase. So definitely, if you're interested in privacy, check that out and uh, see what what's available. We also are going to have risk management. I will be back again to talk about third-party risk management with Stephanie, where we're talking about some questionnaire enhancements, um, assessment enhancements, and some due diligence things that we're adding to the product. We talk about continuous authorization and monitoring on February 20th. On the 22nd, we'll go over compliance and audit management. And then on the 27th, we'll be back to talk about more privacy when we talk about the radar first integration with our partner. So today, as I said, we're here to talk about business continuity management. There are several enhancements that Oswin's gonna go over in a demo. I won't go into the detail on these slides, but I did wanna include two slides for your reference so that you can see what we're talking about. We're talking about some automated uh, enhancements to BAs and plans, and then we're also talking about the availability of operational resilience within BCM. So without further ado, I'll definitely turn this over to Oswin uh, because he's got all the detail and it's easier to see within product. So Oswin, if you could take over, that'd be great. Sure, let me share my screen and then we can discuss this. Just give me a second. I hope you can see my screen. Ring. I can see the PowerPoint. Okay, all right. Thanks everyone for joining our today's session. Um, I'm not going to use a lot of slides. We will directly get into the application. But before we do that, I just want to let you know, whatever we are discussing today, we have it already created as a collateral. So you guys can just sit and look at uh, what is being demoed, right? And then we will share this PowerPoint with you. What I mean by that is, so there are around what, 60 uh, odd slides. It's going to cover all the screens that we are going to discuss today, right? So you don't have to, uh, create copies or uh, you know spend time on that. 
we will share this for your reference offline. Uh, like I said, we will go into the application directly, right? So the first enhancement that we are looking at is around maintenance of the business impact analysis, business continuity plans, and then finally the exercises, right? One of the major advantages of using ServiceNow's business continuity management application is if there is data already captured anywhere in ServiceNow's platform that gets reused again in BIA's planning and exercises, right? This is something that we always wanted to do and achieve. So previous releases, what we did was when you're creating a BIA, you would be able to just say, what is your scope? And based on your item in scope, let's say business process, your related business uh, applications or software will get automatically pulled in from the CMDB, right? And if you have done your BIA and set all your dependencies in the BIA, right? Uh, all of those dependencies will get pulled into the plan. And then from plan, it used to get pulled into the exercises. So this is something that we already had, but what we have enhanced now is the easiness of maintaining this going forward, right? We created a BIA, and then there are some underlying changes that happened in the CMDB, right? How do we handle that in the application? How can that be easily consumed in the BIA newly that you're creating, or if you have already created, how can that be updated? So this is what we are going to look at first. Then we will go into plan, and then we'll go into the exercise, yeah? So that's the first uh, enhancement we are going to look at. This is on how you can uh, maintain these BIAs on an ongoing basis. All right, so in this release of Washington DC, you will start seeing there is a new menu item that has been introduced. It's called pending updates, right? So here you will be able to see that there are some things called a snapshots that we have created. We will go into this and look at what this is. And I'll, have, I'll also explain what are the configurations behind the scene to get this working. So let me open up one of the snapshots here. So basically there is a business impact analysis that's been created in the system. And once it was created, uh, there are some updates that happened in the CMDB. That is, some assets got added. So you created your BIA for a business process and you published it. It got approved and it got published in the system, right? Now, somebody else went in and then they provisioned new applications or they decommissioned some of them or they updated the level of relationships in the CMDB, right? There can be multiple changes. So what this functionality lets you do is, it lets you configure what are those tables that you want to monitor. For example, the CI classes, right? So it could be Linux servers that you're looking for. If you are doing an ITDR plan, if it's a business continuity plan, it could be as simple as software applications and data centers, right? So you can set what are those tables that you want to monitor and what are those new relationships from these tables happening to my process in the CMDB level by the CMDB owner, right? And what this does is this configuration will create a snapshot for you and you can set the frequency when you want to run this uh, scan, right? So it does the scanning part and then it will tell you what are the newly added items which may be needed to be included in your BIA because your BIA is outdated now. Somebody changed the underlying relationships. Do you want to go and update it and publish it, right? So this is presented for the user to manually verify this. And you can see there are 14 things added. There's nothing updated as such. And nothing that was added earlier in my BIA has become invalid now. So if it was, you would see those also in these three related items. Once you review this, <clears throat> you can just click on update BIA and it will go update that particular BIA in the system. So let me see if I can open up one more that has something that's deleted or updated, right? So we can go in here and if you see here, in this case, some things have got deleted from the CMDB. You can see the source. That's where I've set the monitoring uh, part, right? This is the source tables that I've configured. We'll look at the configuration as well, how this can be configured to monitor this entire thing. If I go into the BIA, let's say the user doesn't go into this report, right? 
when somebody is reviewing this or somebody is looking at it at a later point in stage after this was approved and published, right? Or if it's in draft during the workflow itself in this case, during the workflow, somebody changed some of the data in the CMDB. So you would immediately, when you land on this uh, record, that's the business impact analysis, you'll see this alert message. It will tell you that there are dependencies that have been updated in the source. So do you want to view the snapshot and apply this change? You click on this, this will take you to that snapshot where you have the newly added ones, updated ones, and deleted ones, right? This is where you can see this. And the user can uh, update it from the snapshot directly, or you can go into the assessment and we have added something called update dependencies. Earlier, it used to be CMDB dependencies, right? Now we have expanded that. This dependencies can come from multiple tables. So we made it generic. The user can click on it and then it will pull in the uh, related dependencies, right? And once it's updated, the error, I mean, not the error messages, the notifications will go away. And what would happen is in the snapshot that you're seeing, here, this list, right? Uh, there is also one got reduced, right? So that's because we would have moved that into a completed state. Uh, so the unsaved or unupdated snapshots would be in new status. Once the user says, I want to update it, it will move to complete it. If you don't want to consume that update and just want to cancel it, right? It will move into a cancel the status. By default, it is filtered by just the new ones, right? You'd be able to apply filter on any of these columns and set it as default. So the user sees only the latest. And we save this all these completed ones. So there is traceability, right? Not just from the business impact analysis, but from here as well, where the user can go in and see on what date was this update pulled in from the source and when was it applied onto the BIA. So for this, the user doesn't have to monitor the system all the time. What we have done is, let me quickly show you one more screen here. Hopefully you can read this. Uh, let me expand this. So this is a screenshot of the actual email that goes out. Of course, you guys can configure your own email as well, but this is the one that uh, uh, is shipped out of the box, right? So if you are a BIA owner or a plan owner, right? We look at the plan as well. It's a similar mail that is sent out. Once there are some updates on things that you own, we create it like an email digest, right? So what I mean by that is there are two records that this person owns and uh, there are some updates to the underlying tables for these things. So the user can see what kind of updates have happened, like a summary, and there is a link to go view the snapshot. Once you get this in your inbox, that's when you click on this link and land up on that particular snapshot that you want to uh, apply or review. This is the manual method of updating these dependencies into the BIA. That's number one. Number two is we ensure there's a configuration for our customers who have um, not a very big BCM team, right? So the manual intervention has to be minimum. So you can set that configuration and this snapshot would be created, but it would immediately move into completed, even though the user has not reviewed it and clicked update BIA, right? It will automatically get pulled into the BIA and the user doesn't even have to go click, but they will just receive that email stating these things have been changed in your business impact analysis. If you want to go look at it, right? At a time when they have, this as priority, then they can go and look at it, but the change would have already happened behind the scene, right? So that is the other way of doing it. I mean, other configuration that we have introduced. And before we go to the configurations, let me just uh, tell you one more thing. So uh, you can also set every time there's an update that happens, right? Let's say this BIA is approved, for instance, uh, when you do an update on an approved BIA, do you want to keep it still approved or do you want to send it all the way back to the owner? So the review cycle kick starts again, right? So the uh, owner again looks at it, makes every correction that they need to do or if everything is fine, they submit it. The reviewer again looks at it and then approves it. Then again, it goes into an approved state, right? Or if you want to maintain the state as it is, you can do that as well. 
So these are the configurations we have done. Now let's quickly look at uh, these configurations, right? So under business continuity, uh, we have introduced something called as general administration. Um, I mean, general administration and then business impact analysis dependency update configuration. So this would pull in the configurations. You can base it on the template of the BIA. So for each template, it can be different, different frequency, et cetera. So I'm just pulling up one so we can go over the details here. So you can provide a name and you can provide uh, the whether it's an active or not. So in case you want to make this obsolete at some point in time, right? You want a new configuration to be created. You can just inactivate it. You can provide an order. And there are help text provided in context to every single setting here, right? So it, it makes it easier for you guys. We are trying to update and maintain the business impact analysis. So you need to know the table name, but by default it's filled for this release. So you guys don't have to uh, go look for this one. And then the filter condition is, we are going to maintain the BIAs that is not in an archive state, right? So you can set the BIAs that you want to update and maintain. So for example, if my recovery time objective is, uh, let's say, uh, recovery time objective, recovery tier, or recovery point objective, any of these, right? So you can look at that and you can set the value and only the ones with that value will be monitored and updated. Or in this case, I said status, right? Status is not equal to archive. Only those will be updated and maintained in the system. And fields to be updated. Here, I can also say uh, state of the BIA uh, is to be set as draft, right? So if you do this, Whenever there is an update to the BIA that's happening by the system, it will get moved back to the draft status. If you do not set anything, the status will remain wherever it is currently. If it is pending approval or under review, it will still be under review. The system would have made the changes behind the scene and the current workflow will continue. If you set it back to draft, it will move back to draft. And based on the updates that's happening, you can also change any value of any of the other fields in the BIA, and you can provide the target uh, value that you want to set it, right? So you would be able to set any of these things in the BIA form. So this field is a little checkbox here. This is going to determine whether you want these updates to be manual or automatic. <clears throat> if I do not set this, this would trigger the email to the user first that there are some changes, and there'll be a link, the user can click on it, they can look at the changes, and after reviewing, they can manually click on update, right? That's the manual way of doing it. If you want the system to make the changes and then inform you of the changes that have been made, you just simply need to turn this on. So this would auto-update your BIAs and send out an email to you saying, these things have been changed. Now, this is the target part of it, right? What should I set the uh, target value as, and uh, what are the things that I need to monitor and update, right? So this is the target record that we want to do. Here comes the source tables. So this, in this case, I've selected CMDB as the source table where I want to monitor this. And the last one is the notification. If I want to send a notification, that is nothing but this email that we were discussing. Uh, or if you don't want people to be bothered, right? You can simply turn it off. So if you say that, it will ask you to pick the user field that you want to use from the BIA, who needs to receive this notification. So this is how the configuration is done for this particular functionality. Uh, let me go back to this one. Uh, I hope you can see the screen again, right? Uh, so that is how business impact analysis updates are monitored from the source tables for the dependencies. This is number one. Number two is for planning. So when we have updates in the CMDB or in the BIA, right? It could be either of that, this one and the CMDB. In any of them, if there are updates or in both, we will be able to configure it and that will get pulled into your plan. So this is 
BIA gets the update from the CMDB, plan gets it from BIA as well as the CMDB, both of them. In case you don't have a matured CMDB and you're making all your dependencies and linking between processes and assets during your BIA that can directly be pulled into the plan as well, right? Let me show you how that is done. Similar concept here, there are pending updates that I can see. Yeah, and I can just go into a snapshot and see that uh, this is for a particular plan. This is the plan name, right? And I can see that things have got added and I'd be able to see where did it get added. So uh, there is a related BIA to my processes and there are some downstream dependencies that have got refreshed there. Somebody has re redone the BIA. There are some changes in the CMDB that has happened, right? So earlier we had to, uh, you know, re-associate the process to the plan and then refresh it. Only then the latest BIA used to get picked up. So we have done this functionality to include that changes in BIA as well as CMDB. You don't have to re-allocate uh, or reattach any of these scope items. It will get updated automatically and we will monitor all of these changes. Same concept, you will be able to see the updated items here and deleted items here. Let me see if I have any other example. Uh, okay, this also has only added. Okay, so you can see there are some updated things here, right? If something had been removed, you would see that in the deleted item as well. So this is one way of monitoring this. For this also, the user doesn't have to be monitoring this in the system. The same notification applies here as well, similar kind of stuff. If you own multiple plants, you will get a single notification with all the changes that have happened. And then you click on the link and you can look at this, what are the changes are, right? And you can update that. Uh, or if you go into the plan, right? Uh, let me just pick a plan here. Let me open the plan. Uh, if this is already in workflow, right? The next person in the workflow will see that there are some underlying changes that have happened and that has not been applied in the plan yet. So you know that I will want to stop reviewing this at this point in time and I can send it back to the owner asking them to apply all of this and then resubmit it. That's number one. Number two is if the plan is already approved and somebody is looking at it, who has the edit right, right? Not everybody in the organization, but if the person has the edits right, they'll be able to see that there is this message that's popping up. And they know that, okay, this is an approved plan, but looks like there are underlying changes. We need to redo this plan or update the plan, right? So you would be able to click on the snapshot link. You'll see what are the newly added items updated and deleted. And you can say update dependencies and it will just pull it in into your uh, the scope and the related items. Basically, you can just do that and it'll queue it up for uh, updates. So that is the plan update functionality. Mm. It'll get pulled in, right? So this is the manual update process. Same way, like what we discussed for business impact analysis, plan also has a configuration. So I can go into the plan configuration and I can see uh, what are those things that I want to set here. I can provide a name, active order, and the target, right? So this is the business continuity plan that I want to keep updated. Uh, that should not be archived, for example. And I can say whether it is an after update or it should be a manual review before the update happens to the plan, right? And I can also say, what are the sources? So in this case, I can make sure the CMDB changes are pulled into the plan the downstream dependencies from BIAs are pulled in or the BIA upstream dependencies also. So I can also ignore the upstream, for example, and say, I want to only get these, uh, these um, source changes into the plan automatically updated or sent for manual review. The last one is the notification. Uh, this will govern who needs to get the notification and if they have to or not, right? So you'd be able to check that and update it. This will apply to the plans. Now, taking us to the last one on this functionality, and then we'll take some questions on this, right? Uh, let me just quickly show you the bit where we also have the exercises part. 
exercises also has this functionality. Uh, what we have made sure here is we have added uh, exercises, I mean, configuration that will pull in the related items from CMDB, BIA, and plan. It can be from any of this, right? So it incrementally increases the tables that you can monitor and update the source table. So you can look at the assets. Uh, you'd be able to see these are the assets, right? And you can see where did this get pulled in? So I added something into the exercise manually. Let's say I just added this application first. And in CMDB, there are some relationships that will get pulled in. If you want it to get pulled in from plans as well, I mean, BIAs as well, you can set it and it will get pulled in here. And uh, you'd be able to see uh, these are all CMDB items. If it is coming from a plan, it will show that as the source as it's coming from a business continuity or ITDR plan, right? So I'll show you how to configure this one. Uh, the manual way of updating it is you'll just click on update dependencies and it'll get pulled in. It's the same kind of configuration for this as well. Okay, so I can go into event dependencies and I can see a similar configuration. So there are three, right? Impact dependency, this is business impact analysis configuration. This is planning. And the last one was the event dependency. These are the three admin configurations that we have enabled for this functionality to work. So you can see uh, what are the exercises that we want to keep updated and uh, pull in the latest, right? Let's say, for example, you don't want to go and update anything that is closed, right? So you can avoid that. <clears throat> you can select the rest of the things, yeah? Um, so if the exercise is already closed, then I don't want to go make any changes automatically or by the user. So I can just filter that out and those target records will not be updated. You can basically uh, base it on any different items in the uh, exercise form. Similarly, these are the sources. Like I said, it can come from the CMDB, the related items. It can be from BIAs or from the plan assets as well. So these are the available tables from where you will be able to keep your exercises and events and the scope in it up to date. So this is the settings for this functionality. And I think we discussed this in brief, right? Sorry, one second. Let me go back to this. And let me open up a snapshot so that I can uh, tell you guys. Uh, let me just pull one of this. Okay. So here <clears throat> you're seeing this added, updated, and deleted, right? And there are dependencies in all of these that are updated. So when you update this, it's, it applies the entire set. You would not be able to pick, for example, one of them and avoid another. So that is the uh, functionality for Washington DC release. We've received some uh, feedback from many of our customers that we should be able to cherry pick the updates that we want to do. Um, that's something that we will add in future because that feedback came in late in the cycle, right? So currently in Washington DC release, if there are underlying updates, you can either choose to apply the entire set or you can just cancel it. It will not apply any of these updates, right? So that is how this works today. All right, so this is the maintenance of BIA plans and exercises and the sources from where you can pull this in automatically versus manual review and then apply the changes. Now let's look at if there are any questions and we can take that up and then we can look at the next feature. There are a couple that came in, so I don't know if you can open the Q and A on another screen. Or... Yeah, and open it, but I don't think it will be displayed to the user, so I can read it read it out, right? That'd be great. Yeah. <clears throat> are there details of the data model that aligns BIA and CMDB? Yes, we can share that with you. Somebody's asked for the data model that is for BCM and CMDB. Um, we can share that with you guys. Kevin has asked, this update functionality is available in all levels of licensing, correct? Yes, this doesn't have to do anything with licensing. This is a very standard basic feature. As long as you have BIA plans and events, you'll be able to 
get these updates. Um, our uh, Kamara has asked, like, our BI is currently pull dependencies from BCM. However, we are updating our CMDB if attached sets on the business process from the CMDB for the CS refresh. Yes, that is correct. So um, if you already have the BIS and if you're changing the CMDB, it will still apply as long as you have that configuration on. And when that runs, the changes will get pulled in, right? So that is something that we have done, taken care of. Um, then we have from Kevin, when the updates to the BIA or plan are made, will the PDF generated be regenerated as well? Or should be a flow we would add? The PDF generation would take care of the new changes, right? If that is what you're asking, Kevin, uh, let me just open that plan again. Uh, if I just go in here. So the way this works is the PDF generation works is um, when you first generate the PDF file, right? It will generate and it will add it here. Okay. Unless there is any delta in this, uh, this will be something that people can download. If you go regenerate it, it will generate it again and it'll add it. But at that time, the update, once after you do the update, if you generate it, it'll, it'll generate with those updates. And then when people download it again, they will download the latest. So that is how this will work. Yeah. Um, and I think the details will have that as well. So every time you generate the file, you can go track it. And in the attachments, it's the latest that gets displayed. So every time you apply the changes and you pull it in, it will pull the latest and create a new copy of the PDF file. This basically is for the creator or the person who's updating the BIA. So you can keep generating stuff. And for the rest of the organization, where they just want to download your update and view the plan, latest plan, they'll not go into this, right? So they'll just go into this one and they'll just download the latest if they need. And you can make this available in other screens as well, wherever you need. That's how we have uh, tackled that one. All right. Uh, Aswin, there was just one clarifying point. Will that automatically regenerate no, PDF? The, P the PDF generation is driven by that manual action, the UI action, where we say uh, generate PDF file. Thanks. And can I also uh, ask uh, that David, who was asking the question for the uh, model, that you can put your email address into the chat just yeah. for uh, yeah. hosts and panelists so that we can follow up with you. Yeah, definitely. We will do that. Um, OK, uh, I think uh, there's one more question, Alicia. Can you put your question into the chat or into the Q&A? I think we are unable to unmute anybody because this is in a webinar mode. So if you can put your question into the chat, I'm just adding my email address so you guys can. Okay, David, I've given you my contact. Please send me an email and then we can get things answered for you. All right. So this was the first functionality. The second one, is also something that uh, many of our customers have been waiting for, especially people who have wanted to do resilience from and services point of uh, view, right? So what we have done here is we have added um, business continuity management will have uh, the operational resilience workspace as well, right? Let me explain what this is a very quick overview of the functionality. And then we can look at uh, what are the roles that we have introduced for this and how you can access this, right? The existing VCM users. So uh, we have introduced it as a separate workspace. It is not combined with the BCM workspace, business continuity workspace, right? In case you have users who are focusing only on operational resilience, and you have a separate team that focuses on business continuity management, you can create these, uh, assign these workspaces to these different roles. Or if they are doing both, you can assign both of them so they have access to both of this, right? Operational resilience application is going to be focused on business services that you manage and the supporting assets and providing and risk compliance and business continuity lens to it to monitor the resilience across, right? That is the idea. 
So in this case, as soon as the user logs in, there is an home page, like in other applications, you'd be able to see there are 21 business services that we are uh, managing, right? And uh, you'd be able to see the services by different classifications, right? And then there are some red flags. When we say red flags, these are the problem areas when it comes to resilience. Basically, this is green because there are no issues or P1 issues that are still open. But we have four controls that are failing, right? Which is impacting these uh, services, right? So what this means is because of the failed controls here, there could be a situation where it escalates to a crisis event, right? And then you need to activate a business continuity plan. And this could be impacting your overall resilience in your organization, right? Operational resilience. So that's why this is getting highlighted here. There are no high risks that have been identified in the latest assessment that the risk management team did. So that's not a problem. But you can see that there are some current outages that the teams are working on. And these are impacting one or multiple of these services. Again, all of this is in context with these business services, right? We, are, we have set a metric for incidents. There are some change requests people are working on. And these are coming from technology aspect, right? I can see what are the ongoing tasks in this. We'll go over this uh, in a bit, bit, right? And there are some suggestions, basically. Uh, you'd be able to see what are the controls to be strengthened and what are the risks to be uh, mitigated. Basically, the risks are zero. That's why you're seeing that. But there are some controls that are failing. These are the four controls. And each control is impacting three different business services, right? So it just uh, lines it up based on the number of uh, business services each one of this is impacting. So you know where to focus on or where to start from. The suggestion section just provides you that particular angle. Uh, and you can also look at the uh, issues and risk and business continuity plans and everything from a pillar perspective. We call these as pillars, people, process, facilities, and suppliers, right? You can uh, dissect the data in that as well as a predefined filter. We have provided that. Now let's look at the uh, different modules and capabilities in operational resilience. You would be able to create and maintain the business services in this application under this particular menu here. These are all the business uh, services that are there. So you would be able to open a particular business service, for example. And I can see that uh, uh, the same view, but only for my business service. Earlier, it was for the entire 21 services, right? So I can see what are the red flags, where are they coming from? Uh, I can also visualize like uh, the hierarchy of services. So I'm looking at faster retail payments, for example, it rolls up into a group service, right? That is called payments. Under payments, there's faster retail payments. And then under faster retail payments, there are some more retail related services here, right? So the hierarchy of services that can be maintained and further broken down into business processes that support these services. In our business continuity management, we are doing a BIA and uh, relating the process to dependencies, right? So the processes are added to what we call as dependencies in BIAs. Sorry, I picked the wrong um, example here. But uh, from the BIA, the dependencies will get pulled in here as well. And you can see what are the RTO gaps, uh, RPO, when was the BIA done? And when was the last time it was exercised, et cetera? I'll try to show you one more uh record but this pulls in information from cmdb the business impact analysis business continuity plan and the exercises that gives you an idea of business continuity related activities that have happened that are related to your business service this is an end-to-end -end business service which is broken down into the processes and then the underlying dependencies the exercise might be happening for a particular application that supports a process and the process is supporting your business service, right? So all of that gets pulled into this view. You would be also able to see the issues from issue management system, risks from IRM, right? But for data to populate in these tabs and these different metrics, you need these applications to be installed. Otherwise, you can just hide these off until those are getting installed and you start using them. You can just use this with the BCM information, right? 
So you can see what are the business continuity plans related to it, and you can uh, track the business service related resilience from this view. That is one. Number two is uh, like your RTO assessment or BIA in the traditional BCM exercise, there's also an importance and impact tolerance assessment that has to be done on your service level. Okay, so we have introduced a survey capability for that. So this is a regulatory mandate in multiple places, right? So you can provide a name, you can set who are supposed to be part of the workflow. You can provide a milestone by when it has to be completed. Uh, you can set the scope of the assessment, okay? And uh, you are going to pull in a template, questionnaire template, which will populate and you can have categories of questions. And under each category, there can be multiple questions. By default, we have enabled three categories. What is the impact on customers if your business service goes down, right? You'd be able to say what kind of customers are there, what is your customer base, capture a rationale for each one of this question. Uh -huh. You can come up with your own question as well. It doesn't have to be limited to these. This is just an example so that you know what can be done with this, right? You can think of it like a survey um, that's being sent out. And you have decided what questions are supposed to be answered and what kind of options are available. Either it is a radio button, a checkbox, a drop down, etc. So once the user provides the answers, yeah, um, we will have a score assigned for each answer under each question. And you can do a math, uh, like you can add up all the scores or you can multiply or get an average, right? And based on that, you can decide what should be the final output. Basically, we are doing this assessment, entire assessment for calculating for the business service. What is the importance? So like our recovery tier in BIA that we do, operational resilience needs to needs you to classify your services into importance, right? So this gets classified as uh, not as recovery tier one, two, three, but as most critical, critical, et cetera. So you can set the values, but by default, it starts from one and ends at four. There are four scale importance that we have set, but you can always go and configure additional ones. And then there's an impact tolerance. The impact tolerance is very similar to your RTO, but the concept is this is encompassing all the processes under the service, all the dependencies under the service. So in an ideal situation, the business team will set this for the high level business service that is being delivered to the customer. And this needs to be dictating what is required from the business process owners the individual business processes, and that should trickle down to further down to the IT dependencies, supplier dependency, and so on. So anywhere in this chain, if there is a gap, that would get flagged out in one of the charts. I'll show you that part as well under this service, right? So that is how we are tracking this. And this is the impact analysis that can be done. Then comes the scenario analysis. This is like a simulation exercise. Yeah, uh, I'm just opening up an existing record so we can quickly go over this. There are recorded videos in detail for operational resilience. Uh, that's out there in YouTube as well as we can share with you guys. Uh, for the sake of this meeting, I'm just going over a high level. Over. In scenario analysis, you can provide the name, when do you plan to start it, right? And who's the owner, who's the approver? Uh, once you have done that, there's a central library of scenarios that can be maintained in the system and that can be pulled in for analysis at any point in time. In this case, we have pulled in a flooding situation. The flooding situation is the scenario that I've named, right? And it has three events under that. There can be a power outage because of this. There can be a facility outage or the commute is taken off, right? And uh, once I have added this, the next thing I would be doing is I would add who are the people who need to participate in this analysis and what are their roles and what should be their instructions. I can get someone from HR, someone from technology aspect, someone from supplier, um, someone from finance and so on, right? I need input from all of these subject matter experts. So the scenario analysis is completed. 
Um, so I can add that. I can track their individual responses within this. And I can also see what are the dependencies that we want to be tracking or including in the impact analysis and what are the services that we want to be analyzing. The scenario analysis requirement is to make sure wherever we don't have enough of data from the previous years, right? You have created scenario analysis and accounted for most probable cases, like in a flooding situation, what are the events that can happen? And you include people from different functions and say, what could be the impact on each business service uh, in our department or function, right? So each one of this has a different impact tolerance and a different um, importance, right? Say, right? This is determined by the survey. And based on the input, uh, a flooding situation can last for two days, right? Uh, based on the current controls that we have, continuity plans that we have, and the exercises we have done so far. So this is the input provided by the participants. We'll compare that with the impact tolerance. And in this case, it's breaching all of this, right? So if it is one day and this is two days, it is beyond this impact tolerance. Uh, if it is within, this would say it is within the limits, right? So this is what we are trying to achieve. And once we have this analysis done, then the team also recommends what are the corrective actions and um, issues. So that can be added new or added existing um, analysis. I mean, the issue can be added into this. Yeah. All right, so that is your scenario analysis piece. You can account for scenarios. You can add participants. You can add what are the dependencies and what are the services you want to analyze. You can track their tolerance level to what the scenario output or in impact can be. You can see which ones are breaching and you can track the actions out of the scenario analysis. The actions can have its own workflow and the scenario analysis can be having its own workflow. It can be approved and closed even though the actions are open, right? So that is how the scenario analysis piece is. And the last one is the self-attestation. This is from an operational resilience perspective. So, the regulation, not in all geographies, but some of them also requires the person who's accountable for the business unit or department uh, does a sign off at the end of the year or that time period uh, where you want to submit this for your uh, you know, auditing and references. So you can pick for which department, what is the PDF template you want to generate, and you can add an e-signature, right? And uh, you can say, what are the services in my department? You can select that and you can say, uh, have we done the, have we analyzed all the important business services? What is the approach we took for them? Mm, how did we do the impact tolerance? Have we done uh, the mapping of the business services? Uh, are there adequate scenarios that we have analyzed where there's no data? Provide an explanatory text. Uh, this also is actually a survey questionnaire. By default, we do ship with uh, this, but you can change or you can add your own, right? Once this is answered, you can simply say um, generate PDF file. That would generate it and uh, with the e-signature of this person along with the date, right? Attestation, due date, and attested date, actual date. And uh, all of this will get uh, pulled into the PDF file. Uh, that is... Uh, again, driven by the template, yeah? So you can change the information that needs to go into this, and that can be used for self-attestation. So these are the four capabilities that have got introduced uh, to BCM users now, right? Now let's look at who can access this and uh, what is the impact on licensing and so forth, right? So let me quickly cover that as well. All right, so I hope you guys can see my screen again here. Yeah. So to get access to operational resilience workspace, uh, you either have to have IRM professional or IRM enterprise applications. This was already there, it's not new. But what we have done is we have also added operational resilience for BCM customers here. That is the new thing, right? And these are the roles. So there are some operator roles and light operator roles. Basically, a user who wants to view data into this new workspace that I was talking about. So someone who can only view all of this, they will be counted as an 
uh, light operator. And then people who typically edit uh, the analysis, approve, and then who want to manage the entire system, that is BCM operator part. That are the new roles that we have introduced. Uh, okay, I, like I said, I'll share this PowerPoint with you guys. So you have an access to this offline as well. Uh, but then this would explain the uh, the screens that we discussed, right? Uh, with a very high level, you would be able to see each of the screenshot and all the functionality in operational resilience workspace in detail. And uh, you can get uh, some information that's already called out here. And like I said, there are detailed demos of this functionality, but if you need further help, let us know and we will be able to take it up. Okay, I'll pause here. Uh, and these are all the screens that uh, are there in impact tolerance, scenario analysis and so on. So I'll just share this collateral with you for offline viewing. All right, so uh, that is the presentation I had, but before we wrap up, let's look at if there are any questions and we can answer those. Yeah, I think there was uh, one question about yeah. maturity. Does it require a robust and mature CSDM implementation? Actually, that's the recommendation. But if you don't have a CSDM implementation, you can still have this operational resilience up and running as long as you have the business services captured and then the dependencies can be mapped using your BCM app. It doesn't have to be in the CMDB. You can do this mapping and getting that pulled into uh, the, the operational resilience uh, application directly. But the, like I said, the recommendation is to have the CSDM implementation. That is right. And, oops, okay. Mm. So there are some more open questions. Where can I get this presentation slide deck? I think, uh, yeah, we will make sure that you work on that. This. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, the deck yeah. that I have um, does not have the demo of the full slide decks in it. So I will try yeah, send it, and send work it. with the community team to make that available. Yeah. We can make that available to you guys. Okay. Um, I can see that you have also put in some of those email addresses. We will send it out to you guys. We have that noted. Yeah. Uh, is there anything in the chat? Yeah, I think the recording link is shared typically, so you guys can uh, take a look at that. I think that does all the questions. Uh, I had some more time. If you guys need any other answers, let us know. We can answer. Well, we, are, we are actually just coming up on time, um, so I want to make sure that we're respectful of people's time. I, your sessions generally are the longest ones that I run, so uh, great to see the interactivity. Um, the key takeaways and highlights are on this last slide, just in case anybody wants a summary um, for folks to, um, you know, kind of remind yourselves of everything that you saw. Um, Additionally, if you have more questions, please keep them coming. Aswin did put his email address. He's very open and accommodating to customers. Um, but please also be respectful of his time as well. So if we can use the community as much as possible so that people can um, learn from each other's answers, that'd be great too. And then finally, please join us for future uh, community webinars that we have. Um, there's a lot going on in Washington, D.C. from the Risk Business Unit. Um, and then there's also a cross product. So if you're interested in anything specific, you do have a ServiceNow rep that you can follow up with, but Oswin and I are uh, definitely available and amenable. Um, and the community folks are extremely responsive. And finally, um, definitely check out our blog post. We're trying to make sure that you've got all of the events and workshops and demos and things in one single place. So if you use this screenshot, uh, that would be great. Otherwise, go to the GRC blog and look for 2024 risk and ESG events. Uh, my coworker has consolidated those and really has done a great job of trying to get them from all over the company um, to make sure that you've got a one-stop shop. So finally, I'll say thank you first to Aswin. Um, great detail, great demo as usual. And then secondly, uh, thank you so much to our customers and our partners for joining us on this session. 
very informative. And as I said, if you've got additional questions following, please let us know. So Oswin, I'll let you go for the day. Um, and thank you so much for your time. Sure. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.